So this morning, uh, I would like to uh, preach something uh, from a topic called uh, uh, contentment, the success of Christian life. The contentment, the success of Christian life. Let us turn our attention to First Timothy chapter uh, six, verse six. First Timothy chapter six, verse six. It says like this: "But godliness with contentment is a great gain." Amen. Godliness with a contentment is a great gain. So uh, I'll read that uh, portion, that verse from in in Malayalam also. It is like this. Our Deva Bhakti Ada Yasutram and the Vijari Kinu Alam Hamatur Kudia Deva Bhakti Valudaya Adayam Agunutano. So, you know, there is a, there is a, I mean, uh, there is a uh, correction or uh, uh, there is a uh, translation mistake in uh, 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 in Malayalam. Uh, it is, it is, it is not Alam uh, Hamatur uh, Kudia, but it is, it should be Samtripti uh, Ur Kudia. I mean, that means you know there is a there is a, a translation mistake in uh, that portion in that verse that you know in english it says that but godliness with contentment is a great gain amen so uh, most of the time you know when you read it in malayalam uh, there is a confusion that uh, uh, what is the meaning of alam bhava? but it's actually uh, santripti so the contentment is santripti so when we have the contentment or when we have the the the, the satisfaction Okay, when we have the satisfaction uh, with the, the godliness, uh, that is a great gain. So our topic for today's message is going to be uh, the contentment, the success of Christian life. Every one of us and every, every believer is always discerning that, okay, I need to be successful in my Christian life. So there are many reasons that there are many, I mean, uh, many things that we can understand from the word of God that, how to be successful in a Christian life. So this is one of the main objects that we can go through that contentment or satisfaction in our Christian life will lead us to the successful Christian life. Hallelujah. So, you know, uh, uh, most of the people uh, are not really satisfied with uh, uh, what they receive, I mean, from the Lord. But I would like to I mean, speak about the inner satisfaction or contentment of a Christian believer. You know, if a person is not having an inner uh, inner satisfaction, that means the person is not having the happiness. But if a person is having the inner satisfaction or inner contentment, and that is the success of the of the I mean Christian life of that uh, that Christian believer. So that is what we are going to, I mean, go through in the in the in, in, in remaining, I mean, few minutes. I mean, so the first point I would like to uh, tell you that is what that is. Uh, the contentment is a blessing. The contentment is a blessing. You know, when you read uh, uh, Psalms 118 verse 15, Psalms 118 verse 15 says, uh, "There is the sound of joyful shouting." And salvation in the tents of the righteous. There is a sound of joyful shouting and salvation in the tents of the righteous. I mean, so the residence of a righteous person might be a tent, but may not be a big house. But there is a peace and joy in the tent. Most of the time, we think that you know. I mean, the people, those who are, I mean, having a good house or, I mean, all the facilities and all, I mean, we, we think that, okay, uh, uh, those people are very rich and they have a peace and they have a joy and they have a, a happiness in their life. But actually, that is not true. You know, the, 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 the residence of a, of a righteous person might be a tent and may not be a big house, but there is a peace and joy in that tent. Amen. So they may not have uh, uh, anything to eat and they may be uh, very poor people and they may not be having all the facilities like others, but there is a singing every day and biblical, I mean, Bible reading and meditation and prayer always in that tent, inside the tent. So even though they do not have all the worldly items of things and everything, they are always enjoying and shouting and celebrating the work of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So we have to think about the contentment is a blessing. The, satis the inner satisfaction is a blessing from God. I mean, we have to think about that. You know, most of the time we think, okay, okay, the people, those who are, I mean, living, I mean, uh, just like, uh, what is that, uh, uh, very, very, very richly, you know, we think that okay, those people are having the peace and those people are having joy in their family life and everything, but that doesn't not work. So we understand where there is contentment, where there is satisfaction, there is a blessing, hallelujah. There is a joy and there is a celebration and there is an enjoyment in the family. You know, I used to, I mean, think about the families, very, very poor families. There are many poor families in, in India. You know, I used to think about those people, you know, still they are not having anything. They are always worshiping the Lord. Still, they are not having anything, all the facilities in their house. I mean, they may be staying in a tent. I mean, maybe, maybe uh, 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 you can uh, call it as a, in Malayalam, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kudil, a small house. But at the same time, they are having the joy and they are shouting and I mean, celebrating and praising the name of the Lord and joying in the presence of God inside the house even though they do not have many things. Hallelujah. So we have to understand one thing. So contentment is the blessing that a believer can experience in his life. Hallelujah. Secondly, secondly, the contentment with godliness is a great gain. Contentment with a godliness is a great gain. So let us read 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. Hallelujah. So, you know, this, this, I mean, uh, first Timothy, first Timothy and second Timothy, these letters, I mean, uh, 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 are written by uh, Apostle Paul to Timothy. These, I mean, letters are written by Apostle Paul to Timothy. And in, in, in this letter, in this letter, he warns Timothy about those who think that godliness is the means of financial gain. You know, this is the purpose of that letter, you know. I mean, uh, Apostle Paul is warning, I mean, against the people, those who are thinking that godliness is the means of financial gain, or the spirituality is a, is, is a, is a, is a means of financial gain. And that is what we read in uh, uh, chapter 6, verse 5 or so. Chapter 6, verse 5 says, okay, so there are some people, there are some people, they are doing the spirituality and they are, I mean, always, I mean, showing the godliness, I mean, as a means of uh, financial gain. So we have to think about that. The same practice is prevailing in modern Christianity also. The same practice of uh, thinking that godliness is a means of financial gain. I mean, people are coming, you know, most of the time people are coming and, uh, and following the Christian faith and only to gain some material blessings and physical blessings. I mean, so the, some people are coming to Christianity. Some people are, I mean, joining, I mean, uh, to, the, to the Christian people and they are worshipping and they are showing their, uh, I mean, godliness and they are showing their, I mean, spirituality only to get some of the material blessings and physical blessings. That is true. Even today, some people ask, I mean, if I, if I, if I come with you, I mean, or if I, if I, I mean, join uh, with your church, if I convert to Christianity and what shall I get? So this is the purpose of the people, some of the people, those who are joining to the Christianity today. You know, even there are many people in Christendom that they pretend themselves that they are so spiritual. And they think that they are very close to God and they are very godly people uh, through their outward expression, but inwardly their intentions is financial gain. So we have to think about that point. You know, there are many people they are showing and they are just wanted to say that, okay, we are the spiritual people and we are the, we are so close to God and we are having all the godliness in our life and we are, we are so spiritual. But at the same time, inwardly, that is outwardly, outwardly, their expression shows that, okay, they are good people and they're spiritual people. But at the same time, their intention, I mean, inside, inwardly, their intention, intention is some of the financial, I mean, gain. I mean, so we must be very careful about these kinds of people. There are many people like that. So we must be very careful about these kinds of people. People. Hallelujah. So what is the true gain in our life? Let's think about what is the true gain in our life. It is not the money. The true gain is not the money. It is not the possessions. 
It is not the possessions, but the godliness with contentment is the true gain of a Christian life. Hallelujah. What is the true gain of a Christian life? That is, that is called, you know, the contentment with godliness, with, with godliness is the true gain of a Christian life. You know, most of the people, they have no contentment. They show that they are God, that they are godly people. But they do not have the contentment. They do not have the satisfaction in their life, in their family life, or in their personal life, or something. But we have to think about, you know, you know, if there is a godliness in a person, and that person will have the contentment, and that will be the true gain of a Christian life. Hallelujah! And we will come to the third point. Hallelujah! Third point: the contentment is a standard of Christian life. The contentment is a standard of Christian life. You know, Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 34, Matthew chapter 6, verses 31 through 33, 33. So it says like this, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. So think about that particular verse when Jesus is saying that, do not worry about and saying that what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear tomorrow. Hallelujah. So we have to come back to that portion. You know, whenever we, whenever you read, and even George also was, uh, I mean, uh, reminding us about that verse. Hallelujah! Seek ye first the kingdom of God and our, and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah! So we are not supposed to be worried about anything in our life. Hallelujah! Because God is our provider. Hallelujah! If you have the contentment. And if you have the satisfaction in your personal life, I mean, you will be enjoying in the presence of God always. I mean, what we have in the presence of God and what is given by God in our life. Hallelujah. You know, for a while, I mean, Jesus also was teaching his disciples about how to pray or, or the model of the prayer that we read in, in Luke chapter 11, I think. You know, it's, and he says that give us our daily bread. Jesus said, when you pray, you pray like this. You pray like this. This is the model of the prayer. Our Father in heaven. And then after that, he says that, okay, when you pray like this, give us the daily bread. Which means, which means, do not be worried about what is going to happen, I mean, tomorrow. Because God will provide for you, but you are supposed to ask God for the daily bread. Hallelujah. We are not supposed to ask to the Lord, I mean, our, I mean, I mean for, for, for many, maybe for many years, or one year, or two years, or ten years, or something. But we are supposed to ask God when we pray, oh Lord, I need today's bread. And I need to meet all the needs of today because tomorrow is not for us. Hallelujah. If God is allowing us to live tomorrow, I mean, God already provided. God already prepared everything for the people of God which we need tomorrow. That's the reason Jesus, I mean, taught them that Jesus is, I mean, trying to, I mean, teach them, advising them. When you pray to the Lord, I mean, you have to say something like this that, I mean, oh God, I mean, give us our daily bread. Hallelujah. That means we are not to be worried about anything what is going to happen tomorrow. Hallelujah. I mean, believe that. There is a God. I mean, God can provide you everything what you need. I mean, for tomorrow's. Hallelujah. So we are supposed to ask the daily bread in our life. Hallelujah. That's what we understand that contentment is a standard of Christian life. You know, the standard of a Christian life is revealed by God, Jesus Christ, that is there in, in that prayer itself. In that prayer itself, he says that, I mean, you, you, you don't ask for many things, but you ask for the daily bread. Hallelujah. And if you have the contentment, your prayer will be like that. If you're satisfied with what you have or what God has given to you, you will be always enjoying in the presence of God. You will be always praising the name of the Lord. And you will be seeking the first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And you will believe that all these things shall be added unto you. Hallelujah. 
I mean, this morning, this is my encouraging words that, I mean, do not be, I mean, worried about anything, but believe in the Lord and trust in the Lord. I mean, God says that you have everything and you are satisfied with all the goodness and mercy of God. I mean, in this morning, hallelujah. So we are supposed to ask to the Lord and we are supposed to say to the Lord, oh Lord, I'm satisfied enough. I'm content with everything that I have. Hallelujah. And if you have the contentment, that is the standard of the Christian life. Hallelujah. And we are going to the fourth point. The fourth point is love of money is always against the contentment. Love of money is always against the contentment. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10. In that verse, Paul says like this. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Hallelujah. This is very interesting words. You know, it says that, you know, uh, you know, uh, those Oh, sorry, uh, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Hallelujah. So money is an integral part of a human life. We know that without money, we cannot do anything. But remember that most of the time, love of money is always against the contentment. Okay, so if you have the contentment and if you have the satisfaction in your life, then you will not love money. We know that money is important. We need money, but without money, we cannot do anything. But at the same time, remember, remember, money is not at all a sin. Money is not at all a sin or evil, but love of money is absolutely sin and evil on the basis of scripture. Most of the time, the people ask, oh, pastor, we need the money. We need the money to do anything. We need the money. That's why you're preaching like this. I mean, money is nothing. According to the scripture, I can say that money is nothing. We cannot live without money. At the same time, you have to remember that money is not a sin or money is not an evil thing, but loving money is always I mean, evil. Hallelujah. So the person who has a love of money, the person who has a love of money cannot love his God. Love his God. You know, rather, he is always thinking about his money and his possessions. I mean, how to, how to earn the money and how to, I mean, uh, spend the money or how to keep the money or how to deposit the money or how to multiply the money and how not to spend more money. You know, the people, those who are loving money, the people, those who are loving their wealth, they will also always think about oh, how to make more money and how to make more possessions and how to earn more money and how to keep or deposit the money and how to multiply the money and how not to spend more money you know the people those who are i mean i mean thinking about or loving money they always will think that again i need to keep it i need to keep it i need to keep it you know i will not spend more money and i will keep it and keep it and keep it and keep what they are going to do with that money nothing they cannot do anything with that money but remember that most of the time the lover of money will never have peace in his mind is not at all happy. The people, those who are loving money, they are not at all happy. Hallelujah. But if you are not having the love towards money, you are so happy. And he is not satisfied with what he has, but always running to earn more and more money and the wealth. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from this point, you know. Love of money is always against the contentment. Hallelujah. You know, we think that, okay, oh, they have the money and they have the wealth and they have the possessions. So their family life is a happy life and they, they are having the peace in their life and inner, inner heart. But we have to understand that they do not have the peace in their mind. Hallelujah. They do not have the happiness in their mind because they are loving, loving money. I mean, there are many examples uh, given in both in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. There are many examples. I mean, many people have loved the money and the wealth and they all were destroyed. Hallelujah. I can, I can bring up some of the, some of the, I mean, people, those who were, I mean, just I mean, loving 
the the uh, uh, the money. You know, the first person is Bala. Bala loved the wages of the wickedness, and he was killed. Bala he loved the wages of wickedness, and he was killed. The next one is uh, Akan. Akan was a greedy man, greedy man who stole the silver and gold that belonged to God. And because of that, he and his family were also killed. Thirdly, third example is Gehazi. So Gehazi loved money and the material things and he became a leper man. Again, in the New Testament, it was, it was in the Old Testament and the, and the next one is in the New Testament. Eh? Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira, you know, they loved money and were killed on the spot. You know, they were just standing in front of Peter and what happened, you know, they were just saying that, okay, oh, this is what we got when we sell our property. And the, the, in, in front of the Holy Spirit, I mean, we understand that they were killed on the spot, on the spot, only because of they were loving the money. The next example is Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot. He loved, I mean, uh, Judas Iscariot also, he loved and, I mean, uh, the money and sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and hanged himself. That's what we read from, uh, I mean, the gospel. You know, Judas Iscariot, he loved the money and he sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and hanged himself. The next person is Demas. Demas. So Demas was a follower, a, a fellow minister of Paul. Apostle Paul. Demas was a I mean, fellow minister of Apostle Paul, but he became a lover, lover of money. Became a lover of money. The, the, the destiny of that person also was a very I mean, pathetic situation. So we have to think about, you know, what is the destiny of the people, such people, those who are loving the money. That is written clearly in, uh, uh, in, uh, uh, the same, same verse, maybe uh, First Timothy, uh, uh, First Timothy chapter uh, six, verses nine and ten. You know what is the destiny of those people? I mean, those who are, I mean, loving money. The the destiny is written in First Timothy chapter six, verses nine and ten. It says like this: Those who want to become rich without God's presence fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plug people into ruin and destruction. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. Hallelujah. So what is the situation? What is their situation and what is their destiny? So their destiny is always sorrows and worries and unhappiness and peacelessness. You know, you have to think about, you know, the people, those who are loving money, they doesn't have the happiness, but their I mean, destiny is always end up with the sorrows and worries and unhappiness and unpeaceless, I mean, peacelessness. Hallelujah. So, dear children of God, let us be away from the, I mean, greediness and loving money because that will make us the idolaters. That will make us the idolaters. Hallelujah. You know, you know why I said like that, you know? That means, you know, we will gradually put the, I mean, wealth and possessions in the place of God, replacing God, replacing the other things, you know. So dear ones, do not, uh, I mean, replace God with your money or your job or your wealth or possessions or position because everything comes after God. Most of the time what we are doing, we are replacing God with our money, okay. We, we say that okay, we don't worship our, our, our wealth and we don't worship our money or something. We don't worship uh, the family. We don't worship uh, our job. But at the same time, most of the time, we are worshiping our job. We are worshiping our I mean, family. We are worshiping our I mean, uh, wealth or the I mean, possession or the money. You know, we have to think about that. You know, gradually, gradually we are doing that. Gradually we are putting the wealth and possession in the place of God and just giving more importance for the wealth. So dear ones, do not, uh, I mean, uh, do not uh, replace God with your money or job. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes uh, most of the people uh, have enough to, uh, 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 enough time to do the, the job. You know, they have enough time to uh, do the job and uh, look after the family affairs, but 
do not have the time to attend for the prayer meeting or the church services. Hallelujah. Why it happens? No, I used to think about that. You know, many a times, most of the people, they have enough time to spend. They have enough time to spend with their, fam with their, their family. They have enough time to spend uh, for, the, for their job and for, uh, to, to, to look after, I mean, many things in the family, I, uh, family uh, affairs and everything. At the same time, those people are not having or finding the time to worship the Lord. I mean, to attend for a, for a, for a, for a meeting. Why it is happening? I think we are placing God with the worldly things. We are replacing God with the worldly things. And we are worshipping our wealth and money and job and the position instead of God. Hallelujah. I mean, praise God. And when we worship the Lord, when the money, when we worship the Lord, I mean, and the wealth or the possessions instead of God, that comes and that becomes the idolatry. That becomes the idolatry. Hallelujah. So we should not, I mean, worship anything of this world, but we should be worshiping our living and the creator God. Hallelujah. That's what we understand from this point. And the fifth point is the contentment will help us to be faithful. The contentment will help us to be faithful. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. You know, I, I remember last uh, Friday. We were thinking and we were, we were discussing from uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. What is the purity of the marriage? And the next portion, the verse 5, is uh, uh, talking about uh, the contentment. The contentment. So that is what we read from this verse. You know, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says like this. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It says, be content with what you have. Be content with what you have. Be satisfied with what you have. Many a times, we are not content with that we have. Rather, we are thinking about how can we earn more and more. Hallelujah. So always the contentment is opposite to the covetousness and the materialism. That, that's what we understand from this verse. You know, most of the time, the contentment is right opposite to the covetousness and the materialism. And contentment and faithfulness is interrelated interrelated that's the reason that i gave that point like this contentment will help us to be faithful contentment will help us to be faithful always the contentment and the faithfulness i mean is interrelated because if we are content with what we have we will be surely faithful and we will not go for another option amen if we are content with and if we are satisfied enough with what we have we will be surely faithful to God and we will be surely faithful to the people and we will not go for another portion, another option. You know, so let us be satisfied with our family. Be satisfied with your pet partner and be satisfied with your job. Be satisfied with your wealth and everything that we receive from God. Hallelujah. Remember, my dear friends, my dear my brothers and sisters, remember one thing that we are receiving all the blessings from God. Hallelujah. God is providing everything for the people of God. I mean, so we are supposed to be thankful to God, thankful to God. And we are supposed to be faithful in the presence of God. You know, most of the time we are not faithful in the presence of God because we are not satisfied with what we have. For example, Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they are not content with the fruit given by God. That's right, no? Adam and Eve, especially Eve, she was not content with, she was not satisfied with the, the fruits that given by God. So Eve was eager to listen to the counsel of Satan and the advice of Satan and she was so excited to eat the fruit given by Satan. You know, God gave them all the fruits of the Garden of Eden. But what is happening? No? When 
Adam was not there. Eve is doing a, a mistake there. You know, I mean, when, when Satan is approaching Eve and speaking to, speaking to Eve, and she is saying, that, okay, this is good. I mean, what the Satan is giving, what the snake is giving, this, this is good, and I receive it. She received it. You know, she was so excited to eat the fruit given by Satan. But God already provided everything in the Garden of Eden. But now she is going after Satan and she is excited to eat that fruit also. And I have to experience and taste that fruit. So that's what we understand from the experience of Adam and Eve. So remember, contentment will help us to be faithful. You know, if you are not content, if you are not satisfied with what you have, that means you are not faithful with anything. You are not faithful to God. You are not faithful to your family. You are not faithful to the society. You are not faithful to the, to the church. But if you are satisfied, if you are content, then that's the meaning that you are faithful to God and people. Hallelujah. Sixth point. Contentment leads us to be thankful. Contentment leads us to be thankful. I mean, Numbers chapter 14 verse 2, Numbers chapter 14, verse 2 says, All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness? This is a question asked by uh, the, the people of Israel to Moses. You know, the question is like this. All the sons of Israel grumbled against Moses or murmured, murmuring against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness? You know, the people of Israel, while they were traveling from Egypt to Canaan, they started to murmur against Moses and Aaron and God. They had just started from the, 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 the land of Egypt, and they are going towards Canaan. You know, they started to murmur against Moses. They started to murmur against Aaron. And that same thing is counted as murmuring against God, whom, I mean, who called them from uh, and delivered them from the, the land of Egypt. So God provided everything that they need. Even then, we read many times that they murmured against God. God provided everything, but they were not thankful to God. They were not thankful to God. Why? Only because they were not satisfied with what God provided for them. Hallelujah. They were not satisfied with what they were having and with what God has provided for them. That is the only reason that they were not thankful to God. You know, what are the things that God provided for them? We read in, uh, in, in, in Book of Exodus and the, uh, 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 Deuteronomy and Numbers and all, we read all the things that God has provided for them. God has provided the heavenly food for them. God has provided the tremendous leader, Moses, to them. And God has provided the pillars of fire and pillars of cloud for them. Cloud for them. And God has enabled them to defeat the enemies. You know, but still, they are murmuring against God. Why they were not content with what they had, or they were not content with the, I mean, what God has given to them. So remember, if we are content with what God has provided for us, we will be always thankful to God. Hallelujah. So this is the time and this is the right time to give thanks unto the Lord for providing all the blessing upon us in the past days. Hallelujah. Remember that God is providing everything for the people of God. But many a times we are not just remembering what the Lord has provided for me and you and for your family and for our church. I mean, we are just I mean, murmuring against something. We are thinking that, okay, uh, oh, that person is having that one and that family is having that thing, but I am not having that one. No, no, no. Don't murmur against God. Remember that God is in control and God is providing all the needs of, our, of your heart. Hallelujah. For every family, for every person, God is providing everything. The, for the people of Israel, God provided all the blessings upon them, even though they were wandering in the wilderness, even though they were just traveling in the wilderness, God provided all the blessings upon them. 
God gave the water, God gave the food, and God gave the I'm a leader, and God gave the I'm a pillars of the fire and the cloud, and God enabled them to I mean defeat the enemies, but still they are murmuring against God. It should not happen in our life. Hallelujah. Be content with what we have. We, I mean, be, be thankful to God what we received from the Lord. Hallelujah. Do not be worried about, I mean, what which we, we do not have. Do not be worried about anything that which we, did, we do not have. But be thankful to God and give thanks unto the Lord for everything that you received from the Lord. Everything, every gift that you received from the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what we understand from the history of the people of Israel. Hallelujah. And the, and the, and the seventh and the last point is like this. Contentment is possible through practice. Contentment is possible through practice. Hallelujah. You know, Philippians chapter 4 verse 11. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11 says like this. Paul says here, I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. And I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. This is a beautiful passage that Paul is reminding the people in Philippia. What is that? He says that I am not saying this because I am in need. For I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. You know, most of the time, the people are changed because of the circumstances. But here, Paul says that even though I'm going through the difficult situation, even though I'm going through the struggles, I'm enjoying. Even though I'm in a prison, I'm praising God. I'm praising God. I'm singing songs. And I'm clapping my hands and singing songs because I have the contentment in my heart. Hallelujah. Because he says that he, he learned, he learned how to, how to, I mean, go through the situation. So this is, this is amazing, you know. We should learn, we should learn and we should be trained enough ourselves how to be content with what we have. So this is a training period. This is a practical, practical period, and this is a training period. We should learn how to, I mean, live with what we have. You know, most of the people, I mean, I remember, you know, some of the people, they are not content enough, and they are not satisfied with their circumstances. You know, Paul says that, okay, even though I am in prison, you know, some, you know, once, uh, when you read uh, uh, um, Acts chapter 12, it says that, okay, Paul and, I mean, Silas, they were in, they were in prison. But instead of the prison, they started to clap their hands and praise the name of the Lord and they started to sing and pray. How can a person can sing inside the prison when they are chained and when they are in, in, in bonds? How can a person can sing a song or pray in the presence of God? Only because, I mean, they were so happy and they were so satisfied enough and they were so content. In the presence of God, I mean, they were knowing that, I mean, I mean, all the situations that God gives them will be making as a, as a chance to praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So they were just I mean, turning the, the, the bad situations into good situations. They were turning the bad situations into, into, into the real, I mean, the situations of praising the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So we need to train ourselves how to be content with what we have. You know, because the reason is written in Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6. In Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6, the reason is written. You know, why we should content, content uh, 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 through, through the practice. It says like this, Hebrews chapter 13 verse 6 says, So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere man do to me? I was thinking, why the writer of this book of Hebrews is writing in this way? After writing about the, the purity in the marriage, and after writing about the contentment, after writing about the, the, the loving of the money, he is writing something, maybe you may feel that it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. 
but it is it is joined and it's related to that verse that he says that so we say with confidence the lord is my helper i will not be afraid you know we should have that confidence that the lord is with me and he is my helper i will not be afraid i will not be afraid hallelujah so this morning this is the this is a good chance in our life to when think about how, what is our situation what is our situation i mean are we content enough in the presence of god hallelujah so this morning i would request everyone to i mean close your eyes in the presence of god hallelujah we have been thinking about what is the success of a christian life the contentment is the success of a christian life hallelujah and the satisfaction the real satisfaction real inner satisfaction hallelujah that is the that is the success of a christian life hallelujah because i mean paul says that when god godliness with contentment is a great gain we are becoming a christian or we are serving the lord we are following the lord not only for the physical blessings we are not i mean following god following the christianity i mean not for to not to gain some of the financial i mean gains or something we are i mean asking god oh lord we need the daily bread hallelujah oh lord we are coming to your presence to ask the spiritual blessings upon each person hallelujah that's what we understand contentment is a blessing i mean from the lord and contentment with godliness is a great gain for the people of god contentment is a standard of a christian life that's what we read in matthew chapter 6 that jesus was teaching the people the, the, the disciples that how to pray you should pray like this and give us our lord i mean our daily bread and let us seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you hallelujah remember love of money is always against the contentment love of money is always against the contentment hallelujah and also contentment will help us to be faithful let us be faithful towards god let us be faithful in what we have received from the lord let us be faithful with our our partner let us be faithful with our children let us be faithful to the society let us be faithful to the church let us be faithful to the family hallelujah so let us amen be content content enough and that will help us to be faithful towards the people and god and contentment leads us to be thankful so i mean be as supposed to be thankful always in the presence of god hallelujah the people of israel they were not thankful they were murmuring against god they were murmuring against moses they were murmuring against i mean aaron why you brought us here i mean we are going to be we are going to die why you brought us here but god says that okay i mean i am providing everything for you hallelujah our uh, mighty 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 brothers and sisters i mean our god is providing all the blessings upon us hallelujah our god is providing i mean whatever we need in our in our day to day life hallelujah god is providing all the material blessing blessings upon us hallelujah god is providing all the spiritual blessing god is providing all the physical blessing god is providing all the mental blessing still sometimes we are murmuring against god hallelujah still sometimes we are murmuring against your pastor maybe murmuring against i mean your leader murmuring against the, the people of god the co brothers and sisters hallelujah that is not right dear brothers and sisters i mean let us be content enough let us be satisfied with what we have and let us be satisfied with what we received from the lord let us give thanks unto the lord i mean for giving all the blessings upon us hallelujah and also the third the, the, the seventh one contentment is possible through practice if you are practicing if you are training yourself and if you are doing something in, in as a practice or oh, oh, and, and praying that oh lord i need to be content enough oh lord i need to be content I mean, I need to be satisfied with what I have of God. Hallelujah! So let us surrender our life in the presence of God. I mean, our God is a provider. Our God is a righteous God, and our God is, I mean, doing every miracle in our life. At the same time, let us be content. Let us be satisfied enough in the presence of God as we are living in this world. Hallelujah! So I request that let us, I mean, let us pray together uh, as we are praying together. I request that Sister Jelin, Sister Jelin, to lead us in prayer now. I mean, as we all are praying in the presence of God, I request that Sister Jelin to lead us in prayer according to the Word of God. Let us meditate the Word of God, and we'll be praying. Praise God! Hallelujah! 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 H
Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, for this wonderful morning you have given us to hallelujah. Praise the Lord to come together. Thank you, Pastor, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah, praise the Lord. We are few in number, but hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Lord as we gather together in your name, hallelujah. We believe, hallelujah, presence is there, Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you for the wonderful verses we heard, hallelujah, today, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you for your righteousness, Lord, hallelujah. We have of your glory lord hallelujah but your righteousness hallelujah made us worthy to be in your presence lord hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah for the contentment you have given me in our life hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah for for the daily provisions lord hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord for the blessings lord hallelujah help us and train us lord hallelujah to be contained hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Help us not to live a uh, hallelujah, worldly life, Lord. Hallelujah. But hallelujah. be full, filled with your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Filled with your love, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Filled with the confidence and the faith. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You provide every day's need, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. Hallelujah. As we continue in your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Your Holy Spirit lead us. Hallelujah. Presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God.